Names like Fabrizio Verdum and Damian Meyer are household names in the UFC and in the mixed martial arts community. Their vast knowledge in the art of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has won them several fights and not for nothing. Royce Gracie first popularized the martial art after showing just how deadly a fighter can be on the ground in the very first UFC. Despite being faced up with fighters much larger than he was, Gracie somehow beat the odds and won the entire tournament in UFC 1. His success continued as he went on to win several more UFC tournaments and fights outside of the UFC before finally retiring in 2013. Gracie's success inside the octagon cemented the sport of jiu-jitsu within the mixed martial arts community forever, paving the way for other Brazilian jiu-jitsu masters to step into the octagon such as BJ Penn and Rafael dos Anjos. Brazilian jiu-jitsu is a great discipline to sink your teeth into if you want to get into the world of mixed martial arts as it will teach you how to employ several submission techniques that have been tried and tested for several decades. With that being said, some submissions are used a lot more than others and that's exactly what we'll be talking about today. Hey there, this is MMA Edge and today we'll be talking about the top 5 most popular submissions used in the UFC. Number 5. The Kimura Arm Lock The Kimura Arm Lock, also known as the Figure 4 Arm Lock and the Chicken Wing, has a lot of history to it. The move was made famous by Masahiko Kimura, a Japanese judoka and professional wrestler who many consider to be the best judo practitioner of all time. The aptly named Kimura Arm Lock was the exact same move Kimura used on Helio Gracie after Gracie challenged Kimura to a Gracie's Rules match during Kimura's tour in Brazil. Kimura, after a long and exhausting match with Helio Gracie, ultimately broke the jiu-jitsu legend's arm three times before Gracie's corner finally threw in the towel and declared Masahiko Kimura the winner of the bout. Kimura's famous arm lock would then later be used in several notable mixed martial arts matches. One of the best examples of this would be during the Murr vs Nogueira fight where Frank Murr beat the odds and made Nogueira tap out from a Kimura arm lock despite Big Nog's reputation of being one of the best submission specialists of all time. Number 4. The Guillotine The Guillotine is one of the most popular submission holes in MMA today as several fighters often attempt this move after being forced into a normally disadvantageous position. The Guillotine has also been around for quite a long time as it's been practiced in judo for as long as the discipline itself has been around. Bruce Lee has also used the technique many times in his movie Way of the Dragon. Whether the move is being executed in the context of a street fight or a feature film, the guillotine is a great submission to use if you ever find yourself laying on your back. The guillotine can also be executed while standing up, as Pat Smith demonstrated in his fight against Johnny Rhodes in UFC 2. A good example of the guillotine being used in modern day MMA is when Brian T. City Ortega defeated the venerable Cub Swanson in UFC Fight Night 123. Number 3. Triangle Choke The famous Triangle Choke swipes the third spot on our top 5 countdown video today. The Triangle Choke, much like the guillotine, is often used when a fighter is forced into a bad position. The triangle choke is a fighter's usual choice for a submission hold if an opponent is trapped inside their guard, evidenced by Royce Gracie when he made Dan Seven tap out using this move after a grueling match that lasted over 15 minutes in UFC 4. However, the triangle choke is a lot more difficult to master than most jiu-jitsu submissions, especially if you don't have long and flexible legs. With that being said, it's still perfectly possible to execute the move regardless of your build so long as you practice it often. A good example of the triangle choke being used in the UFC today is when Donald Cowboy Cerrone submitted Alex Cowboy Oliveira. Cerrone was able to secure the chokehold beautifully, easily slipping from Oliveira's half guard and switching to a mount before finishing the fight with a well-timed triangle choke. Number two. The armbar. 
the armbar lands itself in number two on our top five countdown. The technique itself has many variations, although all of them pretty much do the same thing. They hyperextend your opponent's elbow joint while making them cry. The armbar is one of the most versatile submission holes in Jiu Jitsu, as a fighter can easily execute the move from a variety of different positions. Some have used the armbar from the mount position, others from side control, while a few have even done it from the guard. While there have been many instances of fighters from any generation using the armbar, the most prominent example would definitely be Ronda Rousey. Rousey hasn't only influenced the sport of MMA by showing the world that women can fight well too, but she's also popularized the armbar, using it to finish some of her most memorable fights in the UFC against Misha Tate and Liz Carmouche, to name a few. Number one, the rear naked choke. Ah, the rear naked choke. One of the most popular submission holes in the MMA world, the rear naked choke swipes the number one spot for our countdown today and not for nothing. Almost all fighters in the UFC who have black belts in Jiu Jitsu have tried the rear naked choke at one time or another. Many people who practice Brazilian Jiu Jitsu also consider the rear naked choke as one of the most important submission techniques to learn as it can easily end a fight instantly once you have the rear mount position on your opponent. A good example of this in today's modern setting of the UFC is when Georges St. Pierre submitted the former middleweight champion Michael Bisping via a rear naked choke in order to become the new middleweight king. Never mind the fact that he vacated the title a few days later as we're here to talk about his win over Bisping and not his rocky relationship status with Dana White. Going back to the fight, even despite the fact that St. Pierre dropped the count with a vicious right hook that almost knocked Bisping's lights out, St. Pierre still had a lot of trouble finishing Bisping off while being caught inside his guard. St. Pierre's real weapon was the rear naked choke as he quickly sunk in the hold after Bisping left his back exposed for a few short seconds. Bisping and St. Pierre's fight just goes to show you that even the toughest fighters in the world won't be able to withstand the rear naked choke, so long as the opponent gets the opportunity to pull it off. And that's going to be it for today's video. Please leave a like, comment on the video and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for some more awesome mixed martial arts content.